the freestyle cipher in order to be popping everybody has to take their moment to individually individuate and express and be like yo this is my turn and i'm gonna fully be me and own it and claim this moment of shine and everybody needs to hold the reciprocal polarity while that individual is shining and it's when the ego is like proportionally invested it's not that you're not enough ego and it's not that you're too much ego you're the perfect amount of occupying yourself to serve that co-creation of a holy, beautiful moment. What's up, everybody? I'm your host, Patrick Cook. Welcome to Being. Being is a place where we gather to explore some of life's most difficult questions. What does it mean to lead a meaningful life? What does it mean to live a life of purpose or on purpose? How do we make sense of the world? Really what we're asking is, what the hell is going on? My intention with this podcast is to explore what it means to be human in the modern world through the lens of creativity, consciousness, and personal development. Through authentic conversations with a wide array of guests, including artists, intellectuals, scientists, visionaries, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders, Being ventures to make collective sense of an increasingly complex world with the unifying goal of building a sustainable future for all. As humanity continues to march full steam towards extinction, we can no longer afford to simply ask, what is best for me? The question now must become, what is best for me and the whole simultaneously? And so, dear audience, I want to inspire you to take full responsibility, to find your purpose, and to engage your evolution as a conscious agent. I challenge you to live your being. If you're enjoying the content, please do subscribe to the show and get a new episode delivered directly to your device every Friday. And as always, I love hearing from you. So please do rate and review the episode on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whichever platform you prefer. And hey, I might even read your review on a future episode. For show notes and more information, head on over to being-podcast.com. Now, on with the show. My guest today is Gabriel Rima, aka Zen Tempest. Somewhere in the space between Alan Watts and Aesop Rock, Atmosphere and Allen Ginsberg, Immanuel Kant in Immortal Technique, Khalil Gibran and Kendrick Lamar, Rumi and Riza. There is a special place. A place where the majestic backdrop of boom bap music is populated by notions of prosperity and peace. Where cityscapes and celestial horizons meet in a glorious display of poetic union. This is where you'll find Zen Tempest, a.k.a. Gabriel Rima. Service worth is a well worn hat. Torn up jeans and a sunburnt back. Urgent urge to deserve what I have and emerge is absurdly versed in my craft. Like yearn to adapt and observe as I laugh. And I'm not that good, but I'm not that bad. As a young man, I learned it was crass to amass more wealth than I knew how to handle that. While on the other hand, I was raised in a land full of bandits. Yo, 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 Zen Tempest. Welcome to being. What is up, my brother? What's up, man? Yeah, just uh, chilling present excited to drop in with you man yes brother gabriel and i first met in bali another unconventional life uh participant veteran uh, and then we went to madagascar together which was epic yeah. oh my god so good and then we dropped in at uh envision festival in costa rica in february 2020 just that's before the right. shit went down that's right i was thinking about that moment actually yeah. that was beautiful dude amazing experience so uh, I've had the pleasure to witness you um, in your artistry and your creativity through your music and your expression and your hip hop as uh, Zen Tempest. And I figured that would be a good place to start because um, that's one area we actually haven't really explored together when the, we've been together. So like, why hip hop? How did you get into it in the first place? Hmm. Yeah, man. I like that. I like that question. It's... Um, <laughs> It just, it just happened, man, really. Um, I, it started out as poetry, right? 
Mm. Um, I'm just a word guy. I like words. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah, started out just, uh, making sense of my thoughts, making, making something beautiful with words. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, the human experience is, is kind of, uh, whelming. It's a whelming, it's an overwhelming sometimes experience. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we just need, you know, we need tools to just kind of sort it out. So poetry was one I just, it was, it was a way to generate beauty. It felt good. Um, and, uh, but then the hip hop piece kind of like, uh, gradually emerged as like this way to, uh, I saw an opportunity for the poetry to leave the page and to kind of the, it, it was like, uh, yeah, the, the, the page poetry is one thing, but then the hip hop was this way that it like became like 3d or 4d, mm. 5d, you know, pop off. And, and, and then it became, it, it just was, it's, it's a, it's almost a Trojan horse, uh, culturally because it kind of, uh, I mean, there's a lot I could say about it, but it's a way in which, you know, um, I think music is like, it's, it's the soundtrack of life and it's, uh, it's, it's an, it's an underbedding. It's, it's like a, it's like, it's a mantra, you know, mantras are a type mm -hmm. of music and there's a reason why mantras have stuck with us for so long, for thousands of years. It's like this, we build synaptic grooves, you know, when a song gets stuck in your head, it's like that becomes the background of your psyche, you know, mm -hmm. and that's powerful, man, to, to be, to end up the background of someone's psyche like that's powerful that's magic man as far as i'm Absol concerned <laughs> absolutely it's magic yeah and there's two things that came up for me there is one is is using your voice as self-expression and the other is how you know the universe is fundamentally energy and frequency mm -hmm. and so music is a way that uh us human beings can interpret and communicate on certain frequencies that you know really affect each other like music is super powerful like you were saying like when you hear a song you know and i'm getting chills just thinking about it mm -hmm. you know from your childhood or something or some meaningful you know relationship or some you know um some instance where you heard a song and you you equate the emotion that you were feeling at that time with that song and so when you hear that song later on it's like oh my you're right back in that moment you know music has that power to mm. cement the moment into the present and become part of you right mm. so just witnessing you perform has been beautiful uh, like how do you get into that state though like taking it from the page and bringing it to the flow mm. i like it well, first, I just want to touch on, I love that you said that, like, I've always seen music as like a time machine, right? Okay. It's like this, that, like, I mean, you, you, right now I can press play and I can hear Jimi Hendrix, a man who's, who's long since passed away, you know, or, you know, enter name here, individuals mm -hmm. who, you know, it's like Chadwick Boseman who just, who just passed away, you know, the Black Panther. Um, now we're getting into video, you know what I mean? But it's like... Mm -hmm. He just, you know, joined the ancestors in, in the spirit realm, you know what I mean? But it's like, I can just go, like, he left this, like, uh, this echo of himself uh, through, you know, film now that's, like, exists beyond him um, in this really beautiful way. And that's a trippy thing that music can do is now I, people are hearing my voice it's possible that people are hearing my voice right now somewhere 100%. aside from on this podcast interview, <laughs> you know, <laughs> somebody's like in their headphones or in their car, like listening to me while I'm, I'm obviously not talking to them in, in this moment, you know, it's like somehow, uh, yeah, it's a living fossil. Uh, mm. it's, again, the word magic comes to mind. It's like, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's wild. It's totally wild. And it's a transmission. It's a transmission of your essence and your beauty and your perspective, you know, with with um, a foundation of beats. But your your energy is just coming through it, you know, and that is super powerful. People can tune into that essence at any time, you know, and that's just so powerful. So here's a good question that I, I've wrestled with f a fair bit. Where does creativity come from? Mm. Is it, is it a purely internal thing? Is it an external thing? Is it a combination of both? What's your take on that? That's cool. <laughs> I like that. Well, you know, I, I think of things, I, like, I, I resonate with the word like channel, 
mm. um, conduit. Um, like in a way, you know, I mean, just like bre- you, br- you take a breath in, you take a breath out, you know, and that's and those molecules have existed uh, since time immemorial that you're breathing in, right? And so same with the creative spark or the creative impulse. It's like we are momentary um, uh, receptacles for the spark of divinity, right? So it's Mm. like we get our moment to shine, to be on the stage of life, of the world, to sing our heart song, and then we die, right? Mm. So creativity is sort of, it's this thing that moves through us. It's, It's like, it's interchangeable with, um, what some people have called, you know, like the spirit, you know, or chi, it's the animating Mm. force. So in a way, like creativity is life. And then we're just, yeah, we're just, we're just the suits that creativity wears (laughs) for a certain (laughs) amount of time, you know, like, um, that's kind of my perspective. And that's where, you know, to then circle back to what, uh, the question you asked before, which I didn't quite answer. It was like, it's, Mm. it's like, it's a flow, it's a flow state, right? It's, Mm. it's, um, and a flow state is this, is this place you drop into where you are more of a, where you cease to identify as much with the doer and you're more just the doing being done, Mm. you know? (laughs) (laughs) totally that that's amazing and that sort of um reminds me of you know the idea of the ego and i think we should sort of unpack this as far as it'll go because this is the stuff i love talking about i love talking about this stuff (laughs) yeah like what like that's the the reason i started this podcast is like let's explore these really difficult questions and get different perspectives i love the title of the podcast being cheers yeah (laughs) right It, it, it it doesn't get any more fundamental than that right (laughs) right (laughs) right yeah but but what that means to me and what it means to you you know we might be interpreting the same thing but we have different perspectives and might use different language you know so i think having these types of conversations help us to collectively make sense of something that is ultimately unknowable by one human mind right which is kind Mm. of where i think um the the planet needs to be moving towards is a collective intelligence Mm. And so I, I think this comes back to what we we're just talking about. The flow state is, is moving out of the ego identity, mm. right? And so, and ego has been vilified by the new age sort of spiritual community yeah. in many ways as this right. evil thing that we need to get rid of. The ego is not your amigo. And I think that's total bullshit. I just want to I've, say that. I've been, yeah, as, as a, fa- as growing up in a household with a father who's like on a spiritual path, mm. like I, I grew up in a household. My, my dad is a practitioner of, uh, uh, he, he ascribes to a lineage called Siddha Yoga. Okay. That path was made sort of popular or chances are most people who've heard of Siddha Yoga have heard about it through uh, the book Eat, Pray, Love. Right. Because that's the, that's the ashram that she stays at in India is the ashram of the current head of the Siddha Yoga lineage. She's actually a female guru, which is really cool. Um, it's like worth noting you know that there's Mm. there's a lot of male gurus uh, of a lot of lineages you know so that's pretty cool that um guru mai chidvil sananda is her name um Mm. but um anyway growing up in a household where spirituality was a part like my dad is kind of an example of of somebody who um was on this eastern path of like eradication of ego but then almost like lost his ego too much Mm. in that he kind of you know and he has some interesting stories or theories around like how he has like maybe a a karmic like a past life thing around abusing power and so he's kind of like afraid of his power but some of that has to do with kind of like like there's a way that like the whole i'm not an ego thing can be like a spiritual bypass or however yeah i don't know exactly the word exactly the verbiage but it's like I, I I agree with you that there's a balanced perspective of like there's a way in which we're just like this vessel of like life happening through us and then but then there's also like the sense of like yeah like I'm a human being I have these mm. I have this meat suit I have that I wake up in the same me every day 
in continuity. Maybe when I die, that'll change. I don't know exactly what that experience is going to be like for me. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. until that, like consecutively I've woken up in the same body for X amount of time, which is right. like, that's pretty e. That's pretty, that's an ego to me. Right. Like, <laughs> isn't that what yeah. that is? <laughs> yeah. Well, totally. And I think, I think we're, we're talking about the same thing is that consciousness or God or, you know, universal, whatever you want to call it. It, you know, is is an all encompassing thing that we can't um, truly understand. We, we've been uh, manifest in these physical bodies in order to make sense of this physical realm. We've been gifted the ego. This is kind of how I look at it. And the ego is something that gives us an individuated sense of consciousness, right? Otherwise, we would just our minds would explode if we's like, okay, well, we we are this infinite being, but for this amount of time, like you m described, we are in this physical body. So the ego helps us make sense of this physical reality. But the problem is consciousness and, and self-awareness and sentience is such a new phenomenon in evolutionary times, senses, right? Like billions of years of evolution, we've only really been conscious and aware of ourselves for a fraction of time, right? And so once that ego sort of comes to the surface, it's like, okay, it, it has taken over. You know, and so right now we're in the infancy of consciousness where it's we're sort of banging around with each other as these individuals and we see all these problems in the world, which is fundamentally because of ego, in my opinion. But, you know, as we are growing and we recognize that we need to transcend our individual um, egos and start to work collectively. And this is why music has been so powerful for me. Like when you, when you riff with other people in a musical situation in a band or whatever, you are, you're practicing collective intelligence, collective consciousness, right? Cause you get into the flow with, and this happens with many, many other dancing, sex, you know, whatever group activities, church is another collective place that people flow state. Yeah. Collective flow states, I'm into right? That. Yeah. And so that's why I think music is so powerful and the work that you're doing around yeah. music and just getting into the flow state yourself invites other people into that energy and then we can all level up into it. For sure. Yeah, you know, that's it's interesting because like there's the flow state I enter in as like a rapper doing right. like freestyle poetry, right? Doing freestyle yeah. rap, which is a thing I love to do. Um, and then there's the group organism that amasses in a, in a freestyle cipher. So a group of people that are all holding a collective energy and a freestyle cipher when ego is left at the door, not again, <laughs> it's if it's an interesting thing. So, so not, ego, not as an ego is entirely disregarded because a freestyle cipher in order to be pop in everybody has to take their moment to individually individuate mm. and express and be like yo this is my turn and i'm gonna fully be me and own it and claim this moment of shine totally. but and everybody needs to hold the reciprocal polarity while that individual is shining and be yes. fully present and listening and so there's like a vortex type of experience that emerges when the collective intelligence knows so much like oh homie over there he's feeling it he's about to pop off he yeah. pops off, he has his moment, then like he's self-aware enough to realize when his moment has like actualized and like expired. Mm, and then mm. he boom passes it. And then other homie is aware that he is like, oh, now I'm now I'm about to take the rock and run with it. You know, like and so there's like a there's a really beautiful collective um synarchy, synergy that occurs mm. when a group of individuals is self-aware and communal and like situationally aware enough to, and it's the same thing, right. With, with the, with the, when, when you're jamming with your homies with instruments, you know what I mean? It's totally. like, not everybody can solo at the same time. Then it just sounds like terrible. And like, so it's like you have, it's like when you're trading eights in jazz. Yeah, exactly. Right? You, bam, 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 hey, and then it's you, yeah. <laughs> you know? And, um, and you have to be willing enough to claim the ego for your eight, for your eight bars to just rock it and then be mm. willing enough to like not have an inflated sense of ego such that you're like, oh, my eight bars are done. Now it's his time to shine. And yeah. the game, the name of the game is create the most beautiful moment. Totally. Right. And it's when the ego is like proportionally invested. So not, not, it's not 
It's not that you're not enough ego and it's not that you're too much ego. You're the perfect amount of occupying yourself to serve that co-creation of a holy, beautiful moment. Amazing. I love that. So I think what you're describing, you know, when jazzers, uh, you know, trade eight bars or 16 bars or whatever it is like that, that energy that's produced, that's like a microcosm for what collective energy or collective intelligence is, you know, and they were pioneers. That's why, you know, so many people, myself included, were attracted to bands like the Grateful Dead who were exploring consciousness on levels that no one has before in a group. Right. And so when when you get to that level and everybody's like you're saying earlier with the hip hop cipher is everybody's showing up humbly, but also standing in their power. You know, I'm going to bring my unique gifts, my power, my sovereignty and contribute it wholly to this collective for the collective good. You know, and that's not it's not in a collective good in the communist sense where everybody has to dumb themselves down. You know, it's this is a high seeking higher truth. No, and actually diversity is, is it's integral. Good. Right? Exactly, exactly. Because you have this thing that I don't have. Exactly. And yeah, and that's kind we of- We complement each other. Totally. And I geek out on things like human design and astrology and Ayurveda, ways of, that we can look at like archetypally how we're different mm. um, because we're, we fit, you know, as a like- in the same way that uh, a, a beehive functions with mm. different, you know, or, or any, uh, in, in nature, you see a lot uh, communal organism, communities that work in tandem with one another, communities of individuals that work in tandem with one another. Totally. In an orchestrated fashion to all subsist or thrive. And that's, <laughs> exactly. You and know. one of the one of the the prime reasons again I wanted to start this podcast is to facilitate conversations in this direction. You know, another analogy or metaphor I've heard is um you know w the definition of success has to be what's best for me and best for the whole at the same time. And a good model for that are the cells in your body. Mm -hmm. If you think about a single like 150 trillion cells or whatever it is and if they are all acting independently for themselves the body would fall apart immediately but what they're doing is they they have their own power their own agency they're acting in their own best interest their own survival but also in the best interest of the whole or the organ or the blood or whatever part they're part of right and that that's kind of like a model for us human beings right now we're just a bunch of cells banging into each other like saying get out of my way i'm trying to make a profit you know there is a strange disorder there is a strange disorder afoot that feels a little, but then again, you know, that's an interesting conversation also like, cause I do believe that there's a disorder afoot. I do believe that there's been a sense of kind of confusion or misdirection um, that depending on how you look at it has been, you know, several hundred years in the making. Hmm. Um, a collective confusion and yet simultaneously there's actually like uh, an idea I like to toy with is like that there's actually like a hubris in that concept mm. that there that were that that <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I'll let, bear with me here there's like a hubris in the concept that anything's wrong mm. like interesting and, and this is where you know words can get slippery um, because when, when you're looking at individuals in the world who are going through extreme suffering, mm. um, it's kind of hard to look at that and say like, well, yeah, no, there's like, there's definitely something wrong. You know, it's like, it's mm. kind of hard to look at that and say that there's a perfection also mm. at play. And yet, um, there's like, yeah, it, it, I feel like there's a, there's a fine line to ride between like surrendering to an intelligence that's like higher mm. than us. Like, like there's an intelligence that pumps the blood in our bodies mm. that, you know, like you're saying the, the intelligence that, that orchestrates um, governing principles that orchestrate a functional 
communal operation of cells in our body, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But then you look and you say, okay, well, cancer exists. And like, that's a dysfunction, right? Mm. Mm. And it's tempting. I mean, my mother died of cancer. So mm. I'm going to be tempted to say, yeah, cancer sucks, you know? <laughs> mm. um, and there's, there's a certain perspective and this is where there's a danger of the term spiritual bypassing, you know, of, of this idea of spiritual bypassing, right? And this is where we need to like, and it, and it ties into this conversation around ego, right? Mm -hmm. Because like, from an egoically invested standpoint, there are things I would like to see going differently on the planet. I would like to see less people working jobs that they hate, less mm. exploitation of you know, less degradation of the environment, things like this. And simultaneously, um, there, there, there needs to be a sense of trust that there is some really intelligent thing that's like more, at least as intelligent, if not more intelligent than I as, a, as an individually asserted ego, that's mm. doing all of this. Mm. Right. So, yeah, I don't know, like plastic, for example, like I, 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 you know, it's t I, plastic is like cancer. It's tempting to say it's not ideal that there's a giant patch of garbage in the Pacific Ocean and that like our oceans are devastated. But there's also this way in which it's like, I don't know what comes next. Mm hmm. And there are organisms, there are organisms out there that can eat plastic. Mm. And so I don't know like what God has or whatever God, you know, whatever this God concept is like, I don't understand what the inherent organizing principle that's underlying existence. Like, I don't understand what that principle is working towards because it's bigger than me. Yeah. And it's bigger than any one mind can conceive. Right. Which is why collective intelligence is so necessary. Because what I think what we're seeing, like cancer or plastic or the destruction of the environment, are instantiations, manifestations of ego and disconnection uh, manifesting in the world. You know, like the 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 profit driven system under which we live is responsible for the suffering, for the destruction of the the environment, for the scarcity, for you know the poverty, for and even the disease. You know, because we are we are fundamentally disconnected from ourselves. We're out of alignment. So when the body is out of alignment, it doesn't have the capacity in order to fight off the cancerous cells because all of us have cancerous cells in us, right? We're all exposed to carcinogens all the time, but our immune systems, if they're strong enough, can fight them off. It's when we get depleted or if we're out of alignment with ourselves and with, it allows the space, the energy for the cancer cells to proliferate, right? Mm. And so I think from a deeper perspective, it's it's not that it's necessary, but this is part of our path. Is like is kind of what we're saying, right? We need to we needed to go down this path to 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 come to a place where like oh shit. And I think this kind of this ties into the whole COVID situation. It's like we what happens in evolution for me is that pain is is the evolutionary driver. So for example, if you're not in alignment and you're not um, you know taking care of yourself, you'll get some warnings. You'll get a disease, you'll have an accident, you'll break a limb, you know, car accident or a diagnosis or something will happen is like, "Oh shit. Okay, I need to get my shit together." And that's typically when people do. Um, but it's it's an it's an indication, it's a reminder from the universe or God or whatever it is that okay, you need to make some changes here. Right. And that happens on an individual level. I think that's what's happening right now on a global level. Like the earth is like, okay, this path that we're on unsustainable, not going to work, you know? So here's, here's this little viral disease that's going to spread around the world and make people slow down, look at what's important and really reconfigure and come into alignment because it's either that or extinction in my opinion. How does that land for you? What's your take on what's going on? There is, there is a certain perfect storm 
component to what's happening. There is a certain element of like, yeah, if it wasn't COVID, yeah. then what was it going to be? Like, there's something. There's a collective like shifting of tides, moving of scale. Like it, it, it has it has to take some form, like. There, there had to be some. There's, there had to be a pop, right? And in a way, as as drastic as this pop has been, it's slightly less drastic than, um, you know, environmental the environmental collapse. Like, the, I don't know, you know, like one thing that people talk about is like the the ways in which certain communities, like for example, certain communities in China, certain highly populated places where factories have just been pumping, you know, and, and I'm not a, I'm not an expert on this, you know, but I'm just aware of the, of the, the, the theory and the, and the, apparently this is the case that there are places that, you know, where there's clean air for the first time in like generations and like, you know, places in China where they're able to see the sky that, that has been, you know, covered by industrial smog for, you know, a generation or more. Um, So like that's positive, right? That those people are, and I don't understand, I don't understand the nuances I don't understand the nuances of what those people like their economic reality is in regard to that. Like, I don't understand. I don't, I'm not a scholar about like how the government is taking care of them or not taking care of them like financially during all this. But like, if you zoom out, like less pollution is a good thing. Right. Mm. So I think that again, we can't, it's, it's, it's really difficult to bring, uh, it's tempting to bring morality into the conversation. But when we just look at like, this is an event that's like causing a disruption, a pattern interrupt. Yeah. That's, exactly. that's like an inarguable fact. Yeah. Right. Pattern interrupt is a great way to describe it. That's, that's it. Yeah. And a necessary one. Yeah. So that's what I see it as. I see it as a pattern interrupt. I see it as, um, <laughs> So here's where I'll take where I'll take this is like I am a, I am a student of like mythology, okay, and there's a reason that certain myth, mythological threads or themes pop up in different geographical locations and different cultures around the world from different you know mm-hmm. like there's these threads right, and um, the trickster god, the god that stirs the pot. Mm. is it's a thread um <laughs> that exists in various like you have um crow in some like nordic cultures or like loki yeah you have um coyote in um like the southwest you have like there's a bunch of different of these you know different like african gods they they're all these different cultures have their own equivalent there's like um anyway i'm not i'm again i'm not like a scholar but Mm. dig for it dig trickster god you'll find it and what does that mean to you that's like what there i sense the presence of like a trickster energy right now and what the trickster and again it's it's the pattern it is the essence of the pattern interrupt energetic Mm. and it's tempting to like demonize or vilify the trickster God. But if we look at like the deeper layer, it's like, it, it, it's just a part of story. Like mm. this is a story that has played out again and again through different civilizations, like throughout the course of history and the trickster God plays a role. It's like, it's like mm. there's, there's a trajectory and the trickster God throws something in it. Like the whole story in a way it's integral to the unfolding of the story. Yes, exactly. <sighs> so, yeah, you know, um, it's interesting. Actually, Pan is a trickster god, and 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 Pandemic, Pandemic, the trickster at play, the pattern interrupt. Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. Hey, are you feeling lost, frustrated, 
Angry about the state of the world, but unsure what to do about it? I get it. The world is a pretty messed up place right now. Yet in these interesting times of shattered realities, many people are using alcohol to escape and numb their feelings of anxiety, dread, and uncertainty. I know. I did it for years. This is why I've made it my mission to support brave souls in mastering their inner world and finding a deeper sense of purpose. To that end, I created Reset 2020. Reset is a personal transformation mastermind group with the intention of resetting your relationship with alcohol and becoming the best version of yourself in an empowering, supportive online community. To check out more about Reset 2020 and to watch my masterclass video, head on over to go. Dot patrickcooklife.com. Remember, cook is spelled with an E, C O O K E. So it's go.patrickcooklife.com. All right, now back to the show. Yeah, so I really want to tune into some, some of the important work that you're doing in the world. I know you and your partner, Rania Sebastian, anybody who's not oh! definitely check it out. You guys host um, an, a retreat called Ecstatic Awakening. Is that correct? Yeah. I would love to hear more about that and the work you guys are doing um, in the world. Yeah, totally. So Ecstatic Awakening is my my partner Rania's like uh, brain child, heart child. It's her like vision that she downloaded that you know her it's like if creativity is this thing that's moving through us it's this thing that is moving mm-hmm. through her you know that she has mm-hmm. been kind of chosen to to birth and and bring to the mm-hmm. world and um she's been doing retreats for like 10 years and but we 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 met at this there's there's this huge intersection of a passion in both of us to do this group work and it mm-hmm. looks kind of like retreats and a retreat is just a group of individuals coming together for a period of time to like have a shared practice, a shared energetic focus, get into some of that collective flow state to like totally shift. You know, there's different ways you could look at different words you could throw at it, but you know, to, um, you know, you could say like raise your frequency or whatever, but it's more just mm-hmm. like, we only have so much time. Here's the premise of the ecstatic awakening retreat hit me we only have so much time on this planet and maybe you believe in reincarnation maybe you don't either way this life now you're given this body we have this amazing planet like what are you going to do with it yes i love it and 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 our and how many of us are are you know just sleepwalking through life just Mm. not you know not in a space of gratitude, not in a space of like fully like actualizing ourselves, Mm -hmm. um, uh, fully tapping into our creative genius, fully in service, living that full volume. Um, you know, the whole premise of the retreat is like, let's get together and just like turn up the, the awareness, the self-awareness, the communal connectivity, the fun, the embodiment. Um, and we do this through like, you know, I could talk about, there's like features versus results. So like features, we do ecstatic dance every night with some really awesome, um, DJs, desert dwellers, um, liquid bloom, Trevor moon tribe, Kamenanda, like, uh, Porangi. So some of these people who are playing at, you know, playing at festivals to thousands of people, they're doing these intimate retreats with us. Amazing. Can, just, just for any of the audience that might not know or be familiar with ecstatic dance, can you just describe what that is? Yeah, totally. Um, ecstatic dance is a container where you're just encouraged to move in an uh, authentic and uninhibited fashion. Mm. So um basically you could just be at exact dance and just be like in seated meditation like the whole time if that felt organic but let's say you're in seated meditation and you start to just you're feeling the music and you start to move you know it's a space Mm -hmm. where you can allow whatever is like authentically moving through so you can you know you can like (laughs) you can kind of play it you know you can just be express yourself through your body in an embodied Mm -hmm. authentic way 
in a safe space to do that. So yeah, it can be super like awesome, drastic and dramatic and full, you know, and like yeah. backflips or whatever, you know, or it's, or it's just, you're there in the corner kind of grooving. There's contact improv is, is a thing that works its way into ecstatic dance where you kind of are in that again, like group, it's like a shared dance, like a flow state where you're uh, touching and sharing energy in that way. Um, yeah. I just want to share something with you, dude. Um, and that some of my audience might resonate with is like, I I'm kind of new, like I've been on a sort of journey of personal, you know, development, awakening, transformation, knowledge seeking for many, many years. But I would, you know, I was in a, in a culture where I grew up that wasn't a big spiritual community. Right. And so yeah, I had limited, <laughs> limited exposure. Like I'd never been to a retreat until like four years ago or something. Totally. And even the idea of a retreat is like, ah, it's a bunch of people sitting around talking about their feelings, all this sort of, yeah. you know, there's these bullshit sort of um, yeah. stigmas that were around them. All right. Until I started going. And so I had the courage to say, okay, I'm going to go check this out and see what it's all about. And then it's like, oh, oh, yeah. this is what it is. This is real work because yeah. you're invited to show up vulnerably invited to be yourself fully and that is scary as hell for a lot of people it's scary, yeah. it was scary as hell for me because a lot of us are, we a we don't even know who we are under the surface because we're playing all these roles that we think we need to play in order to fit into society and be successful right and so it, why it's so powerful i think the work that you're doing with ranya is it allows people to be in that space and to come into contact with their true essence yeah. and then once you sort of feel what that feels like expand that outward into okay well what am i here to do you know what is it mine to do in this world and it's not necessarily the job you're in right now right which is okay as well totally but it's you know it's an invitation coming back to what we were saying earlier about collective intelligence it's like each of us need to stand in our own power and a full expression of our own unique gifts in order to make the world a fundamentally more beautiful place for everybody and the more we can do that in collective community, the more powerful it will be. For sure. Totally. And that's where, you know, you know, I mentioned benefits versus features, right? So features is like, I can list like the things that we would do, which even if I were to say them, it's not gonna, it's not gonna translate to what the actual experience is like. Like I could tell you about ecstatic dance, but a, every ecstatic dance is different. And B, it's only one component of a much larger experience. Like I might express what ecstatic dance is as a concept and you get super uncomfortable, but that doesn't exist in a vacuum. At the retreat, like you're getting to be familiar and know all these people. You're getting to like, like it's an environment in which like, yeah, just to isolate the idea of that experience, but not to like, You'd be like, oh, that sounds super uncomfortable. Oh, why would I want to do that? Oh, but you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's like, you can't, you yeah. can't solve like, so anyway, so to take a step back from, so yeah, there's ecstatic dance. There's like, I could describe, there's like authentic relating, right? It's like, what's authentic relating? It's like, mm. there's no way I could describe to you exactly the things that we do in the retreat. Yeah. What like in, in a way that would accurately convey the impact of, of, I I totally agree. It's you know, experiential. It's totally experiential. The the benefits or the experience, the texture, the taste, the feeling is like it's increased aliveness. Mm. People leave and they feel like, oh, you know how like I was feeling like a shadow of who I am, or I was I had like this taste of like this potential future me that I could be if I choose if I cho if I decided and chose to like step up and inhabit myself more fully like mm. that's the version of people that leave the retreat mm. and that's the version of you that you get to see like feel well up and unfold within you within the retreat is like a more every day you feel more authentic every day you mm. feel more inhibited it's like a you know like a little over a week every day you feel more connected to the people there every day you feel more connected to your purpose every day you feel more you feel better in your body you feel more mm. aliveness more rejuvenation you feel more excited to wake up the next day like that's what it's about right so mm. everything else is just kind of you know how we get you there you know like um 
but that's what we that's what we're doing in these retreats you know what i mean it's like and and it is it is a pattern interrupt right to come back to that term totally that's a whole idea of a retreat is like if we're living our lives on autopilot it's like this space where it's like okay well that's like just come over here and for a week or for four days or whatever, let's just try again from like ground zero. Let's put you in a new environment. Let's take care of your food and your accommodation. And let, like, let's start each, let's have each day be intentionally crafted to like what a day could look like in your perfect dream life. That's what a retreat is. It's, it's, it's a week where an individual has said, has said I'm going to create my vision of a perfect dream life for x amount of days and got and bring people organize a guide and bring people into that vision of like a beautiful life for that amount of time basically mm, amazing and that kind of comes back to something we were talking about before we pressed record on this podcast is you were asking about what's going on for me and i was describing how this podcast feels like alignment for me, you know, and maybe for the first time and the same sort of thing that comes out of a retreat, when you feel that alignment, that connectedness, now you have a new barometer, a new lens to go back to your life. And it's like, okay, now I can see everything with a new frame of mind. How does everything else in my life feel? Where can I make improvements? Where can I improve myself? What changes can I make to go more into that feeling of alignment because I've experienced it being at Gabriel and Rania's ecstatic awakening retreat, you know? And that's been totally the experience for me. And another thing that came to mind is um, when we were in Madagascar together, Rania, and this comes back to what you're saying about the power of it's cumulative over days. When you're here with the same people, you develop a deep collective, a deep community, a deep trust, a deep transparency with each other. And that allows you to more embody your fullness and your vulnerability, right? And I had this experience on day three of uh, the unconventional life retreat we were on in Madagascar, where Rania was leading morning um, meditations. And on day three, during one of her meditations, I had a full non-duality experience, which means I became one with the universe, like the edge of my body ceased to exist. And it was just, there was no (laughs) difference. Yeah. Oh my God. And, but that feeling will stay with me forever. And I can come back to whenever I'm having challenges Mm -hmm. in my life with anything, I can come back to that feeling and use it as a guide, use it as a a benchmark, a barometer. It's like, okay, I know this is possible because I've been there. I felt it. How can I sort of embody that energy and, and, create and and view my life through that energy rather than getting up in the ego mind and the fear and trying to solve my problems from that energy. And it's a massive difference, right? It's not necessarily easy, but it's a practice coming back to it. So I just wanted to, yeah, totally. Cause that's, you know, when I, when I think about you and Rania, that's, that's what I think about, man, just the power that the, the container, the space you hold for other people to, uh, to achieve and to recognize that feeling in themselves. That is massive work in the, in the world, man. So thank you for doing it. Yeah, dude. Thank, <laughs> yeah. Appreciate, appreciate receiving that, man. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, bro. It's, you know, for me, it's like the game of life is like, is the game of like, how good could it get? Totally. And and if you're not asking that question, like, and it doesn't have to be drastic per se, you know, you can go to a retreat and then come back to your life and it can, and things can get just feel just a little more you can walk mm. just a little straighter because some people, sometimes that's all you need. Not everybody totally. needs to quit their job and scrap and start from and move to, to Galapagos and, you know, if, I mean, or whatever, <laughs> you know, move to Bali, you know, not everybody yeah. needs to move to Bali, dude. Like not everybody, you know, it's like yeah. everyone just live where you live, but you can be, what if you would just, were just that a little more present version of yourself. Yeah. You just had a little more, joy a little more spice a little more spring in your step every day like that's 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 success that's winning that's achievement you know like totally is this constant it doesn't need to be this big pop it can just be this though at the retreats there often is a big like (laughs) a big expansion you know which is cool yeah um but yeah man life's a work in progress and as long as you're i think that's also something to talk about is like this like 
projection or like in spiritual, this like pedestaling of like in spiritual communities, like dude, like nobody, we're all just walking each other home, man. Like, yeah. like there's no, like there's nobody has it figured out. Like, and even people who, you know, even people who have certain things figured out, you know, it's like, for example, like the coaching industry or, or what have yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's like, they're, maybe you can enter like a client coaching relationship with somebody because they have something figured out that you don't have figured out. But that doesn't mean mm-hmm. that there's not like another thing that you have figured out that they don't have figured out. It's like, and that's again, coming to the collective. It's like, we all have our peace, mm-hmm. you know, and I can, I could coach people on, you know, rapping and, and creativity and in freestyling, you know what I mean? Cause that's the thing that I've, for some reason invested myself into, but Mm. I have so much to learn about so many other things, you know? Mm. I totally agree, man. I totally agree. And I think a sign of intelligence, um, is being open to constantly being humbled, constantly being open to new ideas and constantly refining your worldview. It's when we get stuck and think, Oh, I've got to figure it out. This is how it is. And you operate from there. That's where you get into trouble. Right. And yeah. And I agree on the coaching front. Like I, I resisted venturing into the coaching field for a long time for, for exactly these reasons. Like who the hell am I? I don't have shit figured out, but at the same time, I do have a lot to offer and I do have a lot of lived experience specifically around sobriety. Mm. Like alcohol was a major part of my life for 30 years. Right. And so the process that I used to escape from that, I think is very useful for some other people, you know? And it's, it's not like, I'm telling you what to do. I'm holding the space, the container for you to figure out what to do, right? right. So I'm asking you the right questions. I'm holding up the mirror so you can see your blind spots, right? And so it doesn't necessitate me having all the answers. You have all the answers. The client has all the answers. It's my job just to hold space for them for them to find it the same way you do on retreats, right? And so that's kind of how I was like, oh, shit. Okay, well, coaching isn't, you know, although, of course, there's the myriad of charlatans and snake oil salesmen in the coaching industry that's giving the rest of us with good intentions a bad name, of course, right? Right. But that's in every industry, so. It's just how it is, yeah. It's just how it is, right? Yeah, it's interesting. I'm actually just in in the process of sort of cracking that cookie. Yeah. Like, actually, I have my first my first coaching client that I'm taking on as like a creativity coach or like a a, a rap coach or a self-expression coach. I'm actually, it's like right after this interview is like my first. So I'm on a threshold with that. Nice. Um, Congratulations, bro. Thanks, man. And you know, it's interesting because there was this huge resistance to like, again, you know, being raised in like a spiritual household or whatever. I can just laugh at all of it, man. I can laugh, you know, having lived in Bali, it's like, I, I can, I don't take myself too seriously, man. I, I can laugh at the, at the, at the labels and the titles and the, the mala beads and the incense. Like, I don't, you know, like, cause I just realized that it's like, like I'm from New Mexico, man. So it's like, <laughs> I, I just know my roots, you know what I mean? Like, I know, I like, I know that it's like, we're all just people bro and it's like it doesn't matter you know what it doesn't matter if i have a man bun or if i'm wearing this or it's like if you if i if i had a different haircut and i was wearing a suit and you met me two weeks later you'd have a different opinion it's all a fucking joke man it's like Mm. it's not about it's not about appearances life is not about like about showing it's like it's like if you feel at one with God, like that's yoga. You know what I mean? The asana, the practice, the breath work, that's just to get you there. But if you can Mm. get there and you don't even need that, like more power to you, bro. Like Mm. just be with God, just be one with God. And you don't even need all that shit. Like that's the whole, (laughs) that's that's the joke, you know? What is God to you? It's just so much simpler than like, (laughs) I think a lot of like, it's just like, it's, it's what is God not is like a harder question to to answer. You know, I mean, I don't know, man. It's just like, like life is a holy thing, you know? And it's not, again, it's not about spiritual, like throw out the words, if the words don't matter. if if the words don't serve you, you know, like I I did a yoga teacher training and one time I've actually done two. (laughs) 
<laughs> um, <laughs> laughing at myself, I guess, you know. <laughs> um, but hey, you know, it's been a useful tool for me. Yeah. Um, and one time we were reading through the Upanishads, which is like a sacred text. And I just felt like everybody like circling in their heads. And it was like the whole passage that we were reading was all about like how it's not, you're not going to get there through your head. And then we're here, we are dissecting it through, through our heads. And I just, it was like this, it just happened. And it was like a pattern interrupt. I just threw the book across the room and I was like, if, if this book becomes a buffer between you and the lived experience of like godliness or divinity or like love is really what it boils down to like joy beauty gratitude then like it's it's going to serve you better as toilet paper or or you know burn the thing for warmth you know because it's like that's not the point like don't let it be another ego trip don't let it be another thing that you get yourself hung up on you know, God is like the humble, God is the fucking, is the guy who's willing to clean the toilets and still like be just grateful that he has a paycheck at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's like, that's God, bro. Like, you know, God is, God is somebody who's just like meets their dharma, their karma, their life circumstances with, with grace. You know, that's a man of God. It doesn't matter if you're wearing you know, if you're wearing a, if you're wearing a preacher suit and you're molesting children, you're not a fucking man of God. You're, you're, you're the <laughs> devil, you know, like you're, you, I'm, I know I'm cussing a lot kind of, I don't know if I'm allowed to do it's that. It's all good. But, now um, knock yourself uh, out. I'm just saying like, you know, a man of God doesn't have a costume. Like a man of mm. God, if the man of God's costume is a smile and kind eyes, you know? Mm get over the label, get over the, the religion, the baggage. Mm. Like it's all just, mm. well, I think, I think especially for me, I, I grew up in a, a Catholic family, Irish Catholic, and you're, you're sold this idea of God as this thing, this being that's eternal, that, you know, the man in the sky with the flowing white robes and the big white beard, you know, it's like that you have to defer your power to, you know, it's like, and that, that was the first thing that really triggered me as far as awakening is concerned. It's like, wait a minute, like, who is this guy? Like, you know, what, what the hell's going on here? And so that, that embodiment, that monotheistic embodiment of, of a godlike figure in a man's body, it was like, that was, is fundamentally a broken model in my opinion. It's a clever ruse. It's a clever ruse for population control. It's basically what it is if you want to call it out. And so, you know, peeling back those layers and it's like, okay, well, for a while there, well, maybe I'm atheist or maybe I'm agnostic or, you know, maybe I don't know. And that's for a long time what it is. And I still don't know. But the more I sort of go into myself and my lived experience and my embodiment through practices like you're talking about, ecstatic dance, meditation, authentic relating, community music, all of these things bring you closer to a feeling which I think is what is closer to God than anything we can conceptualize with our mind. It's a, it's a feeling, it's a, it's a field of everything that is fundamentally benevolent and good and true and beautiful and love is basically what it is, right? It's a field. And so the more that we can, and this comes back to where we're talking about the ego, like the ego is something that we've been imbued with to make sense of this 3D reality, but it's we've crawled into the shell of the ego and cut ourselves off from the collective intelligence, the field, right? And maybe the quantum field, you might even want to call it. And so our, I think our only job now is to recognize that and to say, okay, well, the ego has been in control for so long. Let's like take a back seat, ego. I'm going to let my true essence shine through, you know, like you were talking about earlier, what happens in, in your retreats. And that's really your only job is to be the best version of yourself and express your unique gifts. And that is your godliness. Does that make sense? Yeah. Fully, fully, totally. Cool, brother. Well, listen, man, this has been amazing. I want to be cognizant of your time. I know you got another um, call coming up. I want to talk to you about one more thing, and then maybe we'll even get you to rap if you're feeling it, if to throw down a little freestyle. Um, but my question before that is like, how do you get into like right now, for example, you know, getting into a flow state when you've, you're in a different frame of mind or you're doing something else, what are some of the things you do to get into flow? 
<laughs> for me, I think the game of like life is is called like follow your aliveness. Follow your aliveness. And when when flow occurs, it's a byproduct of that. So it's a game of, you know, hot and cold. You know, it's like a warmer, 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 colder, colder, colder. So just notice just it's that's that's phase one is so this is kind of the more abstract and i could give a few like more like flow shifters or flow hacks you know um but you know so one of them would be just like anything that gets you in your body so for me step one take a deep breath drink some water get some sunlight on your skin do kind of just some like like yeah inhale lengthen your spine exhale Feel your shoulders sink and your center of gravity lower. Like that's step one. And then it's like emerges from there, right? So I'd say throw on some awesome music. I love like, you know, YouTube is, a, is an amazing thing. I love like, like, like chill step mixes. Like these just like, or like lo-fi hip hop beats. Just anything that's got, that's like, for me, that's like, it's like a non-invasive, just kind of like dope little be you know and then i can do whatever you know because then it's like i just I'll, you know it's 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 one thing at a time let's do what needs to be done I'll, I'll i'll do some dishes you know and i that can be a flow state as long as i you know um yeah it's like just just whatever whatever feels like it's gonna get you into a vibe you know and just notice just notice when you're yeah a huge one is just notice when you're really not flowing get in the habit of just noticing that and then just stop doing what you're doing if you can when you're not right so you're just like, kind of like oh this feels like like we, if we great example is like you're on your computer for like a really really long time and you're doing something and all of a sudden you're just like oh like i'm totally disconnected from my body where am i like i'm dehydrated i don't even know you know what i mean it's like okay well then close your computer you know, like step one and then take a deep breath, drink some water and like, oh yeah, maybe I should go take a shower. Oh, maybe I need some food. You know, it's like, <laughs> Tuning in. it's kind Paying of attention. radical common sense kind of stuff, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, but it's profound it's not- because that's like, yeah. that's what's wild, man, is like, I've been a, a, a restorative yoga teacher and like, it's getting people to remember to breathe, man. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. It's, it's like, it's not that profound, you know? I mean, yeah. but it is, but it's like, try, take, take three deep breaths and whatever happens next is going to be better than the version of you that didn't take three deep breaths. Like it just, just <laughs> <laughs> doesn't have to be difficult. I totally agree. Yeah. So are you feeling it, man? You want to, you want to spit a rhyme for us? <sighs> Let's see here. Yeah, if I tune in in this moment, what what feels like a good one to share? Just talking about the the breath, right? It's like uh, this one. Yeah, this one feels appropriate. So I call this one ecstasy, and it goes something like. <sighs> breath settles and the petals start to open up. I'm feeling so alone, and yet I'm feeling so in love. The first step is being present. Yes, it's showing up, and every single step is as effortless as the glowing sun. See, I don't know, but not knowing is enough for me. I feel the molten divinity filling up in me. Slow motion, the synergy of a luscious, sweet rush that is warming me up just like a cup of tea. And it's a luxury, this lack of a doubt. It's enough to have me randomly laughing out loud. Call it insanity or call it an epiphany. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It's delicious, free energy, epically effervescent and heavenly sensually and gently replenishing what was dead in me ecstasy the pharmacist is the breath in me 
splendidly suspended in the splendor of this web we weave. And if I doubted for a second just how precious the never-ending elemental pendulum caressing me was, it was probably because I was fed deceit when I was a young kid drugged by celebrities who celebrated an agenda that was sold to them to sell to me. But I'm older and I've grown since then. And what I've slowly come to boldly understand is how it feels to stand under the flowing water. Damn. Ecstasy. <laughs> Booyah! Yes, brother. Awesome. Zen Tempest in the house. Bro, thank you so much for your time and your energy cool. today, man. Yeah, yes. Bro. So good to drop in with you. So good to catch up and uh, to hear your insights and your wisdom. Tell people where they can get in touch with you and listen to your music. Yeah, so Zen Tempest, Z-E-N space T-E-M-P-E-S-T on SoundCloud. Catch me. Catch me on Spotify. I have two albums up on Spotify and a couple singles. Now, uh, yeah, most of my stuff is on SoundCloud. Get at me. On Instagram, Zen Tempest, you know all the all the platforms. Uh, yeah, if you're ever trying to, you know, tune into this uh, this whole retreat vibration we got going on, um, ext- the Ecstatic Awakening Retreat. Um, just Google Ecstatic Awakening Retreat. Uh, you'll find it. Um, I, we also do um, one thing I didn't really get too much into is that I also do. Uh, men's retreats um that where there's a a musical focus or component orientation called solar sound that happens in conjunction with a a female music creation music production retreat called shakti sound so um those are awesome so you could anyway just get at me online if you want to talk about retreats if you want to talk about music i am taking on creativity and uh and rap coaching clients if that's something you're interested in so amazing yeah man. love everything you're doing bro um so grateful to have you in my life and so grateful for you coming on the show really appreciate it yeah likewise thanks for having me man that was fun hey everyone thanks for tuning in and if you enjoyed the show please do subscribe rate and review for more information and show notes head on over to being-podcast.com we'll see you next time and remember live your being.